Okay, so first we should probably define what a solution is in a unit called solutions. A solution is pretty much the most simple definition would be any homogeneous solution. Or excuse me, homogeneous mixture. Most of the time in this course and in other uh, you know, biological courses, you think of uh, things as dissolved in water as a solution, but it can take on uh, many other um, uh, types. Okay? Uh, a solution does have a few parts. It has the solute and the solvent. Solute is the minor component of a solution. And most of the time when I uh, talk about solutions, I abbreviate them as S-O-L-N for a solution. And the solvent is the major component of the solution. The, uh, another big difference between the solute and solvent is the solute uh, often changes phases. And that's what constitutes this process uh, solution formation as a uh, physical change. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of different examples. All right, so if we have a beaker of water, and let's say we have 100 milliliters, which is 100 grams of water. And we add, well, I don't know, 10 grams of sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, of course, would be uh, the solute, and water would be the solvent. If, on the other hand, say we have a container of ethanol, and we've got 100 milliliters of it, and to that uh, solvent, or to that ethanol, we add uh, 10 milliliters of water. In this case, water is now the solute, because it is, it is the minor component of the solution, and ethanol is the solvent. Uh, there can, uh, of course, be more than one solute, but typically only one solvent. Uh, to this same solution over here that already has 10 grams of sodium chloride, I could add 5 grams of magnesium uh, chloride. And so now sodium chloride and magnesium chloride are all solutes. Okay. So um, as you know, uh, not everything dissolves in water or dissolves in other components. There are uh, solubility considerations that we have to think about when forming a solution. Uh, and that leads us uh, to a discussion of polar versus nonpolar solvents. And primarily, what, when we figure out if something is going to dissolve in a uh, solution or a solvent, we use the uh, phrase that like dissolves like. Meaning that uh, if you have a polar solvent, you would be able to dissolve polar molecules. And if you have a nonpolar solvent, you would be able to dissolve nonpolar uh, solutes. Um, polar solvents would, of course, be uh, water, um, alcohols like ethanol. Uh, nonpolar solvents are organic solvents, primarily hydrocarbons, which we'll talk about in future chapters like hexane, 
um, heptane, octane, and some other um, solvents like carbon tetrachloride, CCl4, is another solvent that can be used. Okay, and again, what go what can dissolve in polar solvents? It's polar molecules. And we can dissolve nonpolar molecules in nonpolar solvents. In addition um, to uh, polar molecules, you can also dissolve a lot of ionic compounds in polar molecules. Not all ionic compounds, of course, but a lot. So, uh, polar molecules like uh, sugar and other alcohols uh, would dissolve in water, uh, sodium chloride, or say sodium hydroxide dissolve in water. Uh, those molecules would not have a um, high solubility in nonpolar solvents. And thinking about the different things that uh, can dissolve in water, that leads us to the concept of electrolytes. Um, one very important process that occurs when ionic compounds dissolve in water is that they separate. So let's take that sodium chloride. If I dissolve sodium chloride in water, and it is very soluble, into water, the ions actually separate or dissociate into solution. Um, we can write this uh, process as a physical change. So sodium chloride solid changes and separates into sodium plus chloride aqueous. Uh, additionally, um, acids and uh, bases can also create electrolytes, uh, but we'll talk about that in a few um, videos. Uh, other molecules that dissolve in water do not create um, ions in solution, like ionic compounds. So over here, the sodium chloride was our uh, example of ionic compounds. dissociate in water. Molecules like sucrose, so sucrose is C12H22O11, table sugar. We know that it dissolves in water, but when it dissolves in water, it all stays together. So we have C12H22O11 molecules dissolved in water. It still is a physical change, and so we could even draw this or write out an equation for this, such that C12H22O11 in the solid phase dissolves, and so we would write the same thing, except that, of course, we would write AQ for aqueous, and so the phase has changed. Um, for the ionic compounds that dissolve in water, they dissociate and create ions in solution. Ions in solution. When a molecule dissolves, molecules that um, aren't acids or bases, uh, neutral molecules do not produce ions in solution. And it turns out that the ions in solution um, is what gives water, or aqueous solutions rather, the ability to conduct electricity. So pure water doesn't conduct electricity. It takes ions to increase the conductance of the solution so that electricity can flow through it. And that, of course, is very important for a lot of biological processes, including uh, neuromuscular junction and neurons firing. So what we call these types of solutions, 
uh, that conduct electricity is that we call them electrolytic solutions because they conduct electricity, electrolytic uh, solutions. And so any type of compound that causes uh, water, or the uh, aqueous solution rather, to conduct electricity is called an electrolyte. So ionic compounds are electrolytes. Since uh, molecules that are not acids or bases, neutral molecules, do not cause water to uh, uh, conduct electricity, or they do not form an electrolytic solution, they are called non-electrolytes. And of course, uh, electrolytes are very important to uh, us, and so that's why, you know, if you are exercising or playing a sport, you need to consume more electrolytes for the ones that you lose when you sweat. So the uh, number of ions in solution is very important to the electrolytic properties of solution. Not only the number of ions, but also the uh, compound charge that is present in solution. And so that leads us to the next concept, which, knows, is, which is known as equivalency or equivalence. Okay. Equivalence is equal to the uh, charge per mole of ion. So for um, ions that have a single charge, like sodium is plus one, or uh, chloride, which is minus one, one mole of sodium is equal to one equivalent EQ of sodium. And the same goes for chloride. One mole of chloride is equal to one equivalent of chloride. What changes, of course, is when we have uh, ions with a multiple charge. So, for instance, uh, calcium. Calcium is, of course, a two plus ion. And so one mole of calcium brings a double the charge of sodium, and so it is equal to two equivalents of calcium. So if you need the same uh, charge, uh, for calcium or sodium, you can either use one mole of sodium or 0 0.5 moles of calcium would equal the same amount of equivalence as sodium. The same goes true for higher charge and even anion. So one phosphate, PO4 three minus, one mole of phosphate is equal to three equivalents of phosphate. And you can use these as uh, conversion factors. So if we have a solution that contains, let's say, 0 0.275 equivalents of phosphate, and we want to know how many moles of phosphate is present in that solution, well, we can multiply it by that equivalency. There are three equivalent charges for a phosphate for one mole of phosphate. And so we would just take that number, the equivalents cancel out. And so we would take 0.275 and divide that by three. And so we would know that we would have 0 0.0912 moles of phosphate with three significant figures. Okay, one last thing uh, to think about in terms of introducing uh, solutions is the uh, temperature dependence of solutions. It turns out that if we were to talk about the uh, solubility of a solution in terms of as a function of temperature, uh, it turns out that most uh, solutions uh, for um, solid compounds increase. That is because most of those uh, solutions uh, forming are endothermic, and so most solids 
uh, solubilities increase with temperature. And of course the key word here is most. Um, so uh, some actually decrease with increasing temperatures. Um, for gases, it is a constant, okay? Gases, solubility, uh, decreases with temperature. And so gases, uh, solubility curves look something like that. So the increasing temperature gives the gas molecules more kinetic energy, and so they're able to escape the solid, or the liquid, or the solution. Okay, um, and so what we could say for most solids that the solubility is proportional to temperature. For most solids, like sodium chloride or sugar, the solubility is in proportional to temperature. But for gases, it's the opposite. And that's true for all gases, is that the solubility is inversely proportional to the temperature.